Yeah. Good evening. We now call this uh, evening council meeting to order. If you have a cell phone, be so kind to put it on silent, mute, or off at this time. We will be led in prayer by Madam Clerk, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Madam Clerk. Oh God Almighty, Father of wisdom and justice, through whom authority is rightly administered, laws enacted and judgment decree, assist us, we beseech thee, that this city council may be conducted in righteousness and be eminently useful to thy people over whom we preside. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk. Councilors Morgan. Present. West. Present. Roots. Present. Mayor Kirkland. Present. Move for the approval of minutes. So moved. I second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Morgan. Yes. West. Yes. Roots. Yes. Mayor Kirkland. Yes. At this time, we open up the microphone for public comments um, on the action items only. If you have public comments on the action items, God bless you. Action items only. We ask you to go to the microphone, state your name, your address, and your public comment. Hearing or seeing none, Madam Clerk. Resolution, whereas the following individuals have requested a handicapped parking zone. Number one, Denoy Leslie, 2004 Madison Street, Chester, PA, 19013. Number two, Kirby Mitchell, 733 Jeffrey Street, Chester, PA, 19013. Number three, Julio Negron Roche. 824 East 8th Street, Chester, PA, 19013. Number four, Raul Rivera, 2911 West 6th Street, Chester, PA, 19013. And number five, Jeanette C. Smith Pernsley, 1301 Curling Street, Chester, PA, 19013. Whereas after a thorough investigation by the Department of Public Works, it has been determined the aforementioned individuals have met all of the required criteria and have a need for said handicapped parking zone. Now, therefore, the council of the city of Chester does resolve that it does hereby authorize the proper city officials to install a handicapped parking zone in the 2000 block of Madison Street, in the 700 block of Jeffrey Street, in the 800 block of East 8th Street, in the 2900 block of West 6th Street and in the 1300 block of Curling Street in the city of Chester. So moved. I second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Morgan. Yes. West. Yes. Roots. Yes. Mayor Kirkland. Yes. Resolution. The Council of the City of Chester does resolve that it does hereby ratify the appointment of the following individuals to position of per diem laborer Department of Public Works, beginning on the dates and ending August 31st, 2022, at the rate of $13.22 per hour, with no benefits not to exceed 29 hours per week. Ronald Allen, start date May 25th, 2022. Jovan Evans, start date May 25th, 2022 and Kyrie Snell, start date May 31st, 2022. So moved. I second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Morgan. Yes. West. Yes. Roots. Yes. Mayor Kirkland. Yes. Resolution, the Council of the City of Chester does resolve that it has hereby appoint the following individuals to the position of pool monitor, Department of Public Property and Recreation, with no benefits at the rate of $9 per hour, effective June 18, 2022, 
and ending September 6, 2022, not to exceed 40 hours per week. Marquita Ross, Kaylin Ross Winston, Marquia Ross Robinson, and Brandy Butler. So moved. I second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Morgan. Yes. West. Yes. Roots. Yes. Mayor Kirkman. Yes. Resolution. The Council of the City of Chester does resolve that it does hereby appoint the individuals on the attached list at the stating positions to work at the Memorial Park Municipal Pool beginning on the stated dates and ending September 6, 2022, not to exceed 40 hours per week at the stated rates with no benefits for the 2022 summer pool season. Further, said individuals are independent contractors and are not employees of the city of Chester and shall not be entitled to any of the benefits normally provided to a city employee. As independent contractors, the city will not deduct federal income tax or earn income tax from any payments made to a contractor. So moved. A second. Are there any questions? <laughs> Madam Clerk. Councilors Morgan. Yes. West. Yes. Roots. Yes. Mayor Kirkman. Yes. Resolution, the Council of the City of Chester does resolve that it does hereby authorize the proper city official to prepare the advertisement of notice accepting applications for positions with the City of Chester's 2022 Summer Food Service Program. Further, it does hereby authorize the city clerk and other city official to advertise said notice in the Help Wanted section of the Delaware County Daily, excuse me, Delaware County Daily Times and to post said notice on the City of Chester website. So moved. I second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Morgan. Yes. West. Yes. Roots. Yes. Mayor Kirkman. Yes. Resolution, whereas Jorge Garcia wishes to purchase and redevelop certain real property owned by the Redevelopment Authority of the City of Chester at 2714 Swartz Street in the City of Chester, Delaware County, Pennsylvania. The buyer intends to consolidate the property with his adjacent residential unit at 2712 Swartz Street and fence and landscape the property for personal use. And whereas the board of the Redevelopment Authority of the City of Chester approved the Redevelopment Authority entering into a redevelopment agreement conditioned upon approval of the agreement by the City Council of the City of Chester. And whereas the subject property is located in a redevelopment area in the city of Chester, and as such, the sale, lease, or transfer of such property is subject to approval by Chester City Council under the Urban Redevelopment Law at 35 PS section 1709K. Now, therefore, the Council of the City of Chester does resolve that it does hereby authorize the Redevelopment Authority of the City of Chester to enter into a redevelopment agreement with Jorge Garcia for the sole purpose of consolidating 2714 Swartz Street with his residential property at 2712 Swartz Street to fence and landscape the property for personal use. So moved. I second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Morgan. Yes. West. Yes. Roots. Yes. Mayor Kirkland. Yes. Resolution, whereas the city of Chester received $300 as a deposit for an event scheduled for July 16, 2022 from Asia Cobb for the rental of the community room. And whereas the event has been canceled. Now, therefore, the council of the city of Chester does resolve that it does hereby authorize the Department of Accounts and Finance to refund the sum of $300 to Asia Cobb for the cancellation of an event scheduled in the community room. So moved. I second. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Morgan. Yes. West. Yes. Roots. Yes. Mayor Kirkland. Yes. Bill number four, an ordinance, an ordinance of the city of Chester, Delaware County, Pennsylvania, of the codified ordinances of the city of Chester, Pennsylvania, 1978 as supplemented and amended, a 
adopting the 2018 edition of the International Property Maintenance Code, regulating and governing the conditions and maintenance of all property, buildings and structures, by providing the standards for supplied utilities and facilities and other physical things and conditions essential to ensure that structures are safe, sanitary, and fit for occupation and use and the condemnation of buildings and structures unfit for human occupancy and use, and the demolition of such existing structures in the city of Chester, providing for the issuance of permits and collection of fees therefor, and the imposition of fines for violations thereof, and repealing all other ordinances and parts of ordinances in conflict therewith. I move that we pass bill number four on this first reading. I second that we pass bill number four on its first reading. Are there any questions? Madam Clerk. Councilors Morgan? Yes. West? Yes. Roots? Yes. Mayor Kirkland? Yes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You're welcome. We have removed the presentation from today's docket because of uh, information, more information being needed and the individual being present. At this time, we open up open up the microphone for public comment. If you have public comment, we ask that you would come to the microphone, state your name, your address, and your public comment. We're asking that you would limit your public comments to three minutes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. Good. Um, my name is Amin Abdul Salim. I live 240 Patterson Street, Chester. Yeah. I just want to make a brief comment, very brief. I still get butterflies, as they say. I think Michael Jackson had a record of no butterflies, but I, I still uh, you know, get butterflies when I speak to you after a long period of time. I want to, Mayor, uh, Council, people, good people who come, people not come. You know, it's very important, I say, that uh, we keep in the, uh, the protocol or the order in which our Lord has uh, created us to be in. We have to get back there. And one of the things that he says, um, you know, it says nothing new under the sun. And we've been doing all this time with nothing new, just under the sun. Uh, they try to do things, and it just don't work because it's under the sun. They do not go under, up in the sky you know, to our Lord, and, and we are fed from the sky and the earth. So largely that, today, this day, we will go up into the sky. We will connect with our Lord. And we will be fed from the sky and from the earth. And so this is one thing. This is going way back to the uh, forefathers and all. They uh, you know, said this for it to bring us on through. I, I believe that. Also, they says uh, it, every piece of money, every money, they says, uh, in God we trust. And I think also believe that uh, this is a connection that we Go all the way up to our Lord. We spend, uh, you know, we're sensible and, and we do not spend down low here, running around foolish and wild. You no, know, but spend. We're conscious of our Lord. Every in God we trust. I heard it uh, share with you very briefly that they said that, uh, you know, if, if you spend, spend on your family. And I certainly want to spend on our family and not spend foolishly. There's quite a bit that we, we're going to say. We're going to our Lord. The Lord is going to give us something to say. But uh, I congratulate. I, I thank you very much, sir. I thank you, Council, Mayor, Council, all the people who come. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Thank you. 
name's David Cronheim. I live in the city of Chester. First thing I'm going to talk about is on Kirkland and Chester's potential. Excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Cronheim. Excuse me, you have to give your address. I thought I don't. Well, I live on I live on Colhane Street. I hope that's sufficient. If you don't want to give it by way of uh, video, you can simply walk over to the clerk and give her your address. That way it won't be heard. My address is downstairs when I signed in. Is that sufficient? No. It, it's not. Okay, Thaddeus Kirkland was an assemblyman for this district in 93 and held that role through 2016. Chester was subject to Act 47, Municipalities Financial Recovery Act in 95. Shut up. Excuse me. Kirkland has been mayor starting in 2016. Chester went into receivership in 2020. Kirkland has been either mayor or assemblyman for this district through Chester's entire financial crisis. When Turkland was both mayor and assemblyman in 2016, he was uniquely positioned to help Chester's financial status. In 2017, Kirkland signed a contract with the Covanta Company for incinerator host fees. This contract has caused Chester to lose over $10 million in host fees since the contract was implemented. In 2018, Chester signed a contract to turn over Chester Parking to the PFS 7 company. Before this contract, Chester received fees from parking tickets. Since this contract was in force, Chester has not received any parking income. With these two contracts, Kirkland has reduced city revenue, worsening Chester's financial condition. Questions for counsel. And please ask them, answer them all done talking. Who from Chester negotiated the 2017 Covanta host fees contract and the 2018 PFS 7 parking contracts? If road construction starts to build a tunnel to Del Cora, how many years will sections of Route 291 Industrial Highway be closed in Chester and outside of Chester? best and worst case scenarios. Kirkland Councilman Morgan have argued the main source of air pollution in Chester is from auto and truck traffic and that we're stuck with it. A major source of the traffic in Chester is due to trucks carrying 1.2 million tons of garbage to Covanta to be burned per year and trucks, trucks carrying 400,000 tons of ash left over from Covanta burning trash that is sent from Covanta to landfills in Bucks and Berks counties. If all the trash trucks carried to Covanta went directly to landfills, since only 1.8% of the waste burned at Covanta is from Chester, and there would be no ash from trash to truck in Chester, the truck traffic reduction caused by Covanta be over 90% less. I'm probably going to get cut off soon, but briefly. The Covanta incinerator is the largest incinerator in the country. Yeah. All right. Um, Mr. David, just uh, now, and I'll pass it on to you, Council. Uh, uh, Mr. David, because I didn't get your last name. Mr. Kreinheimer. Um, as far as who negotiated the deal with uh, Covanta, that was DCED and the Delaware County Solid Waste Authority. Um, you wanna? Um, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, the parking, I guess, well, I won't say a parking contract, but there was a comment that the city received parking meter money and or parking fines prior to the parking, the PFS contract. That is not true. The city has not had a parking, an effective uh, or active parking authority for almost, almost a decade prior to the contract was in place or was approved. Um, we were not receiving any monies uh, to be exact. 
I was the executive director of the so-called inactive parking authority that was dismantled in 2016. We didn't have any parking meters that were properly that were operating in uh, 2016. So, so I'm not finished yet, Mr. Kreinheimer. Um, so the city of Chester did not receive any funds from parking fines or parking meters prior to the contract. Additionally, the contract does state that the city should receive uh, parking meter monies uh, that is in the contract. But for s there are some reasonings to why the city has not received any meters within those parking meters uh, uh, this within this contract. So I just wanted to be clear, the city did not receive any money prior to the contract uh, for parking meters. And also, Delcora has already indicated on numerous occasions while they were here that there will not be any on surface work being done. Everything will be done underground. Thank you, sir. Teresa Draper, and I'm he here on behalf of my father. I don't live in the city of Chester, however, he does. He lives in this senior building at 600 Edward Street, and there's a huge problem with security. I have made several calls to your office and was told that someone would get back to me. Spoke good with um, Brian Kirkland's office on several occasions and was told someone would look into the problems that are down there. These are senior citizens that are there. There's no security. The lights are out. And I know it's public housing. I have talked to Chester Housing Authority, and it all fell on deaf ears. These are seniors who can't really function, help themselves. So I am here on behalf of my dad as his spokesperson, because there, when you enter the building, marijuana smell hits you. Um, people are running around the halls. There's no security. When I talked to the housing authority about the security, I was told they're seniors. They shouldn't be out in the evening. So I'm um, here. Which, I don't know which, where else to turn. Which building did you say this was? 600 Edward Street. Chatham. Chatham. Senior it's Chatham. Mm -hmm. So I'm just here for some kind of direction, because this has been over a year. I've been trying to reach out and get some kind of help for them. Mm -hmm. Can you give me your number, your home number? Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll, we will look at it. Is, it is a housing authority issue, but we will. We, I didn't know where else to turn because housing authority isn't helping either. We'll, we'll put a call into it. Mr. Fisher. Thank you, Ms. Draper. Tashima Lacey, West Third Street. Um, I just had a question about the um, abandoned buildings here in the city. Um, I reached out to the Delaware County um, Demolition Program. Ms. Lacey. Go ahead. Ms. Lacey, mm -hmm. could you give her your address so to put a record? Thank you. I was just um, wondering uh, regarding the Duck Code Demolition Program, there's funding available for municipalities to get grants for demolition of properties. I just wanted to know if the city has uh, reached out to them regarding these funds and has the city received any funds? And if they have, are there any plans to demolish some of these uh, properties that are in the city? The engineers here, you can answer that. Uh, 
Good evening. Um, uh, yeah, we, we actually uh, often apply for the Delaware County Demolition Program. Right now, we just recently uh, took down about uh, five or six properties on East 10th. Uh, we also utilized the funding for Pulaski School. Uh, they, they provided $400,000 for that demolition. And there were also scattered site demolition prior to that. We have another round that we are going to apply for. And uh, I'm, going, I'm doing a ride around with the uh, code official. We're going to identify the properties, condemn them, submit them to council so we can make the application uh, to the program. If you have any properties that uh, you think should be on the list, please uh, send it over and we'll take a look at it and look to get on the next agenda. Thank you. Thanks, and just to add to that, the city of Chester, we've, um, we were made aware of the funds that the county, Delaware County had. And I wanna say 2016, we immediately started to apply for those opportunities. So we've been using the funds since roughly around 2016, 2017 to add to the funds that we try to, uh, um, try to budget for as far as dem demolition of uh, vacant properties or condemned properties. So, yes, thank you. Seeing no one else at the mic. Before she comes up, uh, let me ask you, is that the primary source of funding that we get for, for demolition from the county? From the county? Is the money we get from the county the primary source of funds that we use for demolition? Uh, we also have other sources of funding, like community development block grant funding. Uh, I'm not sure what the allocation was for this year, but I believe every year we put around one hundred seventy-five to $200,000 as you could see, just, just recently we had two emergencies. One of them is actually being taken care of right now, Charlie B's, uh, that some of that funding goes toward that. Um, and also we, we save money in reserve for those emergencies. So there is a community, community development block grant funding yeah. that we also utilize uh, for demolition. And so that is our, our the city's primary source um, but when we uh, exhaust those funds or when we try to partner with another agency, it is the county. But the city's primary source is the uh, CDBG funds that we budgeted for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's important to know that there are several sources of funds that we use for, for demolition. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, my name is Lee Mayfield, and I just want to ask for a point of order. At the last meeting, there was a young man who refused to Ms. give his address, and you allowed him to speak. Ms. Mayfield. So I'm trying to get clarification on what the rule is. Ms. Mayfield. Yes. Um, first of all, you never gave your address as you came up. And I'm asking you a question directly in relationship to that. Ms. Mayfield. Um, I, I just I want clarity on what the, the rule the, is. The last time you were here, Ms. Mayfield, you gave us a docket number. Um, I gave you a tax ID number. You gave us a tax ID number. Tax folio number. We looked at that number. Okay. Um, there are no taxes paid on that property for over 10 years. so It does not matter. I'm still a taxpayer. It's still yeah. in my name. There, there are no taxes. I'm going to ask the solicitor to make a determination. He's the mm -hmm. city's lawyer. Allow me to confer. Go. <coughs> Thank you, um, Ms. Mayfield. As I stated earlier. Um, we reviewed that docket okay. and no taxes have been paid on that property. And what does the solicitor say? The solicitor said that the city is defining the definition of taxpayer as one who pays taxes. So can I speak or not? No. Am I being denied? No, no you cannot. Am I being denied? Ms. Mayfield? Mr. Kirkland? You cannot speak because you're not a resident, nor are you a taxpayer. Thank you. 
And that's what the solicitor says also? Okay, thank you. Um, real fast, Mayor Council and to the public. Uh, you may not have it in front of you, but there are some flyers up at the podium. Uh, it's just a flyer for the Daddy and Me dance that is scheduled for um, next Friday, June 17th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. It'll be here at Chester City Hall Community Room. It's a free event. Uh, we'll have food, some magic, some games, some music uh, for yourself as, as fathers, as grandfathers, uncles, uh, baby dads, whatever you may consider yourself. Uh, bring your, your niece, your nephews, uh, Garen children out. It is a daddy and me dance. It's not a da uh, daddy daughter dance. Uh, so you can bring male uh, and female, of course, uh, of the children. Um, but I also, I wanna make sure that Councilwoman um, West provides information on Shred Day that's upcoming. Uh, okay. I can't see. Mm-hmm. Huh? Now. Before, okay. before we end, might be someone else coming. Before we end. Yeah. <laughs> but, but thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Council. My name is Margaret Brown, Chester residence, and I gave Candy my address. Um, I want clarification just on two things. First, I want to speak to the microphone more. Yes, I can oh, hear. Okay. The first one was. When you mentioned Delcor was not going to tear up surface to dig a tunnel, how are they going to do it if they don't go digging above the ground first to get to make that tunnel? What, what I meant by that was, uh, and my understanding of the question was that Delcor is going to have piping and all that stuff above ground and right around people's community or their their houses and all that. As they indicated in our last me last meeting, that is not uh, the process. There will be no above ground um, uh, disruption, and there will be no disruption within the communities if we were to uh, allow. That's it to if, but I'm still kind of maybe I'm thick headed. But if you're digging a tunnel down, you got to start on the surface. Mm -hmm. to go down and you're talking about coming through Chester to 291 down to Delcora. So how are they going to get, you got to go through the earth. You have to go through the earth. They're talking about, well, I think it was a hundred feet. A hundred feet down. hundred feet down. Uh, from the now, beginning I, of Chester to the end of Chester. But I don't know if that's from the plant itself, the Delcora plant itself mm -hmm. and going to where it needs to end but none of that is supposed to be it. From our understanding, none of that is supposed to be above ground. Okay, I can understand that, but I know you also understand whatever they use to twirl all things that dig down into the earth, whether they go straight down or sideways, they got to dig through that earth out and they got to bring that earth back up and take it out of there, correctly? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just follow up on that. And the second thing is Mr. Roots, I gave you some addresses last week of three lots that had containers. Have you had the opportunity to check them out? I'm going to have to have you take me down there. I went to the corner. I couldn't find the containers. They're still there. <laughs> Talking 291 and Wilson Street. Yes, right yes. on the corner. It's a yard, fenced in cyclone yard, high, and it's got that black shield around the fence, but the containers are in there on both sides of the street, and also the corner down at the 291 in Palmer. That yard is closed in two, with the containers also in there. Oh, it's a business that has trash containers that they store. Right, down okay. at Palmer Street. That's, okay. Are they? I mean, is that property belong to them to do that, or they just kind of took it over? And I have no idea. And that's what you have to find out. The closed-in yard at Wilson Street. That's the one I didn't find. After this that's meeting, what you have to we'll find. set up a time, and I'll meet you down there. No problem. Okay. Okay, thank Thanks. you. Mary Waits, and I've given her my address. Mm -hmm. I'm shaking because you're talking about Delcora coming down 291. 
and I lived directly off of 291. And I want to know why the residents are not part of these conversations, Excuse me. the ones that are directly affected. Ms. Waits, I, I never said uh, that Delcor was coming down 291. I heard about other persons saying that. I don't know exactly where the tunnel will, you know, travel. I don't know if it's 291. I don't know if it's off road or what have you, but they have been here to, I mean, let me say it this way. I don't remember. They have been here to do a presentation. That was here. And, and um, I'm sure that they'll be more than willing to come and do another presentation if they have to, to clarify any questions that you might have. Well, I, I just feel that the residents who are directly affected because there is no way for us to get in and out of our street, you know, and whatever they're planning, we're always the last ones to know. Because when they were working before, they blocked us. We had no way in and no way out. Okay? It's, I don't I, I don't know when the last time. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, these things are going on right in your city. And it's, you should know these things. You, you didn't let me finish, Miss Waits. <laughs> you know. Ms. Waits, um, and I think I've been very open and honest and upfront. Um, I've been taking you down to Cavanta to tour, to see. I brought, I welcome the Delcor executives here to come and present. And they were here last, the last council meeting. But they didn't really say anything last meeting. I mean, I even got a business card, you know, because I had a conversation with one of the men. But they didn't really say anything. And I just feel like we are always so disrespected. Whatever goes on down there, for years, it's been the trains, it's been the trucks, it's been the dirt, the noise, and we have stood here and said to you all these things, but it just continues. And like I said, I'm the one that's doing all the advocating for that part of the city, along with Margaret and the other girl, and the Chester residents. But it's like, if it's not for us, nothing happens. And we call, we call the DEP. They told us for the noise to call here. We call here, leave messages. Nobody returns our calls. Nobody. Ms. Waits, I remember a meeting that we had not too long ago, and you asked about the noise. Councilman Roots told you that that noise came from Cavanta. And it was going I, on when we left to come here. Um, I followed up with that, and Councilman Roots was right. The noise came from Cavanta. So it wasn't like they were doing some, some type of cleaning. It wasn't like we did not look into it. But it's still continuing. Right. So what is it that they're doing that we don't know? I mean, we should know what it is. You know, because like I said, when we left to come here, the noise was going on. And I mean, it's loud. Along with the trains along with the trucks, you know, and I, it's like no peace. You know, when we come and we, you know, like, like spill our concerns out, but nothing ever happens. Okay. And I'm just concerned because, you know, and you're talking about somebody that don't pay taxes. I mean, we, we've worked, okay. we've worked and we've lived in that community all our lives and we care about our properties. We don't live in a development. We don't live in some village or Nova Vista or, or wherever else, but we care about our properties. Okay. 
We, we need, should we should have some form of quality of life because we deserve it. We're retired. I'd like to okay. address mm -hmm. a couple of your concerns. The loud sound that you hear coming off of Covanta, that's them releasing steam. They produce steam. They burn trash. With the heat from what they burn, they heat water. Water turns into steam. Steam turns a turbine, and they make electricity. What I learned since the time that we've talked is that they don't always use all the steam that they generate. So to release the steam, that's exactly what they do, blow it through the roofs. In another Covanta location, uh, someone sent me an article that they put mufflers on the roof where they release steam to reduce the volume of the release. And they are looking to do that here. I did hear it again today. It was nowhere near as loud as it has been in the past. It's not due to a muffler, but they just weren't releasing as much. And you're probably not as close to it as we are, you know, so. I was closer than you were. I can believe me on that one. I'm, I park about a football field away from them just about every day. So I will just let you know that I've talked to Covanta that neighbors are very concerned about that steam relief. And I'll follow up as I get more information. Okay. I, I cannot fix that problem. With regard to Del Cora and the tunnel project, I think what we should do is Delcora does have a website, delcora.com. They have a link that says tunnel. They have every presentation that they've ever presented, the one here and the one in other communities. I think what we should do, because so many people do not have access to printers and internet, we should print some of those out and, and have them available for anyone who may want to see them. It does clearly show the path that the tunnel is going to go well, along not, with with other information. The councilman, Ruth, it's Ruth, not even a matter of who may want to see it. It should be mandatory that the residents in that section should be given the information. I mean, it's not a question. Like, we need it. Okay. And I feel like we should have it, and we should not have to go through this. Like begging. Is, we had open. Is, 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 we had the public hearing here. That we, was open to everyone. Uh, Delcor is just a couple of weeks ago in the area that you live. Dropped flyers in every door. No, invited, not my door. Invited people down to the location. No. Miss Wait, Front Street. Miss Wait, you. The Ninth Street. And we don't want to cut you off, but yeah, I know. Um, Nobody put any flyers ever on my street, and. I've mentioned that before. Thank you. Miss Waits, don't forget I picked you up. I was and you know why you picked me up, Mayor. But I'm saying, I, I just want you to understand. No, but let me tell you why you picked me up. Why did I pick you up? Because I was at a meeting, a conference call with just the residents concerned for quality life the night before. They mentioned it on the call. So I'm like, okay, well, I never got an invitation. I called that following morning and asked if I could be included. And then I got a call back saying, yes, I could be included. Other than that, I wouldn't have known about it. But it was very interesting okay. when I called. Okay. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> my name is Patricia Zyron, and I've already given my address. I find it profoundly upsetting and outrageous that you guys don't have the answers to the questions we're asking. Why is Covanta in charge of deciding when they take care of the noise and when they don't? Why don't you know the answers to the issue about how this tunnel is going to be built, about the pipes? Has anyone done a study on the leaching that might occur from the tunnel? The tunnel is going to be 100 feet down. Is it going to be lined? Is it going to be protected some way that the, the things that go through there don't leach into the ground and eventually come up and affect the residents that are living above it? 
Have you done a study like that? We haven't done the study, Ms. Siren. Why not? Well, I am not a tunnel expert, nor am I an engineer, but we do have engineers and we do listen to Belcora to, and we have been, there has been a- But they're the people that are abusing. Having them make the decisions about what we're telling you, having them tell you is not the way it should go. You should be telling them. Ms. Irene, I am not a pilot, nor am I one that knows how to construct or build an airplane. But I get on them very often. This is not not about airplanes. I think that your job is to protect the residents of Chester. One of the things you need to do is be vigilant about the things that are being put in here to, to, that can affect our health. And this tunnel can absolutely affect our health directly. Ms. Ms. Zyron, you don't know if it can or can't. Ms. Zyron, we have not made any decision as of yet concerning Delcora. We're still having conversations. We have not made a decision. Have you checked about the the polluting that can come from the tunnel? Have you done any research or hired someone to research it? Are you concerned about the residents' health? Ms. Iron, I live here. My wife lives here. I know. And My all children. Your children and your grandchildren. Thank you, Ms. Iron. No, thank you. Yep. Yep. Any further comments from council? Announcements? Um, yeah, I have an announcement. Um, this Friday and Saturday, June 10th and the 11th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., um, the city will conduct a shredding event. And it will be, like I said, from 9 to 2 in the side parking lot where we always have it. So if you have any old documents and what have you that you want to, you know, have shredded, you know, you can feel free um, to bring your documents up to us and we'll take care of it for you. And that's about it Thank from me. Uh, yeah, coming up on Monday is graduation day for Chester High School, but all Chester graduates are invited to a celebration right across the street here at Ethel Waters Park. It's a day party from two to six. Um, high, school. high school graduates, yes, not for uh, kindergarten graduates, but the point I was trying to make, it's all Chester graduates. We have Chester residents who go to school outside of the Chester Upland School District. So thanks for the clarification back there. But yes, for high school graduates, we would uh, prefer that only the students show up to the party. We don't want party crashers. I don't, I don't, I, you know what I mean. <laughs> I know the mayor is going to go out and dance. And I like to dance. No, but this is really a, a, a celebration for the students. So we want to make sure they get front and center. Little pool update. Everybody's interested in what's going on with the pool. I just want to make one thing very clear, which I probably didn't make clear when I earlier talked about the pool. The pool was broke, and we're going to fix it. And uh, the goal is to get it open by Juneteenth, the celebration on Juneteenth Day. Uh, we're very close to getting to that point. A lot of work has gone into making it happen. I want to thank our engineer in particular, who's working uh, very closely with me to, to get everything done. So be looking for some clean, safe water for those who are going to use the pool on that day. I can go. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, Carol Cuisine, I gave my address at the front while you were speaking. I didn't want to be rude. Um, I did come in a little bit late, so I apologize if I missed the agenda, but I did have some questions prior to this. Um, for number two, I don't know if anyone explained about it regarding the authorized approval of... Uh, Ms. Kazim, I'm sorry. 
Can you step back just a little bit from the mic? Because the Sorry. tape recorder is going to only hear muffles. Thank you. Thank you. I got a lot of voice. Um, regarding the per dem laborers, um, can anyone explain a little bit of what the laborers will be for and why we're hiring for as needed laborers and who? Okay, that's out of my department, okay. the um, Public Works Department, okay. and we handle the grass cutting, street repairs. Um, we, um, Councilman Roots and I really work the Public Works Department together. He handles the parks, recreation, and um, public buildings, and I do the streets. And we, every year, it has been a practice that we hire um temporary help in the summertime that's um we're very short staffed normally so we were approved by the receiver to bring in per diem workers so it's going to be we have three on the um list for now and i am going to bring in one more because i did get approved for four but it's to help with the summer work because we have a lot of grass cutting we do the parks all of the parks there are a number of parks here in the city, and then we have lots that we are responsible for, too. Okay, thank you for explaining that. Um, I was asking that because I, I didn't know what exactly it was for, but now that I'm hearing you explain that, is there, I, I wish the receiver was here as well so I can ask him. Mm -hmm. um, was there a way, just because we're still trying to handle our finances, you know, as what has been said to us, that there could have been a partnership with our local unions just to kind of maybe get volunteer services or try to get support as a partnership just to kind of you know save some money because we're we're hiring i understand the grass cutting um but if they're here locally and it don't have to even be them just you know we have local individuals and organizations that can help do this is this something that we can put up in the air i mean it's good to give people you know the summer job but so we're not just constantly keep going through the same Every year, Mr. Zine, these are uh, these per diem per, uh, workers um, are very essential to um, the work that is being done in the park. We have been working with local 413, our local union. They've helped us with parts of our pool, pools, and other aspects of um, work that we're doing in the community. Um, we're working with the local um, with the prisoners uh, at the prison, uh, NCI Chester. Their work, so we are reaching out to various other entities that have been very supportive. So, so the workers that you are hiring, Ms. Councilwoman West, this is from these entities. The mayor is speaking of. No. Okay. No. You're right. from the Chester community. Okay. Let me um just interject. the adopt the park program that we approved about a month and a half ago also addresses that. So it gives uh, companies around the city an opportunity to pick and choose what park they want to adopt uh -huh. and in that adoption we have language in that they can go so far as to uh, cut grass do cleanups so we have a comp a few companies have already kind of carved out their territory the whole purpose is to really give our public works group some relief if i had my way the only thing that they do is our big parks because it just takes so much effort. Chester Park, uh -huh. Sun Village Park, Crozier Park, Memorial Park. If we can get more companies on board to take care of some of our smaller parks and playgrounds, it would really just cover the city in terms of grass cutting, trash pickup, and you know, allow our team, which do a yeoman's job out there. It's incredible. I, I I get an update every day from Mark Alexander what properties they're cutting. I ask for that. He sends it to me every day. I go around and kind of see, you know, the results of the work that they do. It's it's a lot. I mean, beside the parks and playgrounds that we see on a daily basis, there's also a lot of uh, lots, a lot of uh, neighborhood lots, pockets that that these guys, you know, have to also get to. There's uh, just areas many people wouldn't even think is our responsibility that these guys have to do. So the more we can get the kind of help that you're you're talking about, the less we have to rely on our own force. But I'm also proud that we 
do have the ability to hire some per diems every no, summer. No, that's why I said it's still good green. to hire. And yeah, a summer job have up. always been a big deal, you know, as a teenager. And for the city to provide these summer jobs as per diems and even the uh, number three, the lifeguards. I mean, that's the same situation. Mm -hmm. And you guys did hire already for that or you guys are looking for that? Lifeguards. Mm -hmm. Lifeguards, number four. I'm you did hire or are yes, you looking? Did. Okay, you did hire. Okay. Fifteen of them. And I think that was amazing during the agenda meeting. I just really complimented whoever found 15 lifeguards in the time when most pools and most areas can't find lifeguards at all. We've right. got 15 on hand and we're paying them a pretty good penny. $15 an hour is very attractive. Uh, I know some very uh, affluent areas that aren't paying $15 an hour for lifeguards. So we're, uh, we're in good shape in that area. So summer hires, I'm excited about summer hires. I think if the city can provide summer jobs, that's that's a big plus for the community. Absolutely. And um, the last thing is I'm, I'm looking here. I don't see it on this paper, but it looked like originally you guys had an approval for expenditures. Uh, how come that's taken off? And is there a way the public can see those expenditures? I think that should be public records. Yes, yeah, so we always include the expenditure list on the um, agenda and for mayor and council to approve. We did not have any expenditures within the last week to have on the agenda because of some things within the department. So the next council meeting will have expenditure list on the uh, agenda for mayor and council to consider. Okay. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you. Mr. Solicitor, when we're done, I would like to have a word with you regarding the law on taxpayers. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Kazin. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My name is Amina Abdul Salim. I live 240 Passion Street. Just briefly, I'm in the habit of wanting to see us uh, leave out of here good spirit. And um, I know you're busy. I have an eye on you from a distance. And uh, you are doing some, uh, some good things. People, um, I see some compliment you. You know, mayor and council. So, you know, it's important, if I may, that we keep our eye on our Lord. You know, God said, uh, we plan and he plan and he's the best of planners. Certainly, there's a many plans, but we want to make sure that they are the right plans. We want to make sure that they're the right plans. I won't go on and on, you know, any further, but uh, we want to keep God in it. God said, I, he allowed this to be done with his one hand, this old world, this world that's going out, dying out, to make a way for the good world, the world that he said, he said I allow this to be done with my one hand, but what I'm going to do with you, I'm going to do with both my hands. And so this is where we, we, we our attention want to be at, along with doing the right things, the good things and that you are already doing it, that you're getting credit for. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cuisine. Thank you. The woman that commented about her uh, father, mm -hmm. and I'm glad she just brought that up and it just came back to mind. But on the record, I do want to state that that is actually an issue in the city right now regarding most of the homes and uh, complexes that do house seniors. I know Stinson Towers have a lot of issues regarding uh, security, and I know Palmer House as well, Gateway as well. Um, we really need to hold these individuals that are buying up the property, because I know Stinson and them is no longer under the housing authority, but if there's a way we can hold them accountable, um, they're really complaining about a lot of drugs being left around, needles being out, you know, them not feeling safe. It's really a, a, a safety issue and also a health hazard. So it just came to mind when I was sitting there, but I want to put that on a record. So I think at this point, it's, it's going to take more than us just calling, or if you can, work your magic, call around Stinson, Palmer, Gateway, and figure out what's going on. Please, and thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we um, adjourn today's meeting, do, I do want to say that we will be doing a uh, a gun buyback program uh, this Friday and Saturday. Friday's event will be held at from 12 to 6. I'm sorry, 12 to 4. Hmm. I think it's 12 to 
four. Twelve to six. Twelve to six at uh, the East Side Recreational Center. I'm sorry, two to six at the East Side Recreational Center uh, on June the tenth and June the eleventh, which is Saturday, from twelve to four. We will be at Bethany Baptist Church doing a uh, gun buyback um, program, and we're hoping to be very successful. Seeing or hearing no one else at the mic, this meeting is now adjourned. Hmm? Oh. <laughs>